Steven Liao loves big butts, driving expensive cars, making videos highlighting his 22,000 square foot mansion in Las Vegas and talking about credit cards. He claims he has nearly $20 million in available business credit and he accomplished all of this before he turned 24. Steven is known on the internet as the credit card guru. His Instagram handle is at credit. People who follow gurus like Steven are generally gonna react in one of two ways. Either they see the material success he's had and think he's a business expert, or they see that he uses flashy means to sell a very expensive course in Mastermind and immediately think he's a scammer. The purpose of this series is to analyze gurus and judge for ourselves if they're real or fake. Let's take a deep dive. The credit card industry is run by an algorithm. We're all raised by parents who preach common cliches like credit cards are bad and only use a credit card as a last resort. Credit is <laughs> credit was cre credit scary. Yeah, absolutely. When, in school, I I learned like to to stay away from credit. But what if I told you that there's a community on Reddit with over 200,000 members that all focus on maximizing the rewards of playing the credit card game? If you aren't aware, the churning subreddit is a community of people who treat playing the credit card game as a hobby. This involves becoming an expert at how to use the credit card algorithm to your advantage and receiving cash back rewards, free airfare, and reduced rates on five star hotels. Many of the all-stars in this community know how to receive years worth of free travel by playing with the credit card algorithm. This is where Steven Liao comes in. He's an expert with the credit card algorithm and he absolutely can teach you how to manipulate the banks and card issuers into increasing your lines of credit. With anyone in this community, he absolutely can drastically help you increase your personal credit score. He is someone who adheres to the philosophy of the churning community. Because this series involves a lot of education, I'm going to provide a quick, simple roadmap for succeeding at funding your business with high credit card limits. There's companies out there that are expired, that are inactive, that you can literally just swoop in and pay less than $1,000 and take over. Either, or two things, you're looking for two things. Either, either A, they have credit, either A, they have good credit but no lines of credit, or B, that they um, have a line of credit and they have good credit. Step one, buy an LLC that has a history of spending, a high credit score, or is aged, preferably at least a decade old. You can purchase these for a grand or two. One of the tactics I started doing was I used gift cards. I bought gift cards, um, cash equivalents. I would go to, you know, malls, I would go to Walmart, and I would buy these Visa gift cards. Like, they're not just any, like, Applebee's gift cards, but these are, like, Visa gift cards. They act like debit cards and you can take this debit card spend five thousand dollars on these debit cards use these to purchase money orders put the money orders in the bank and then use the bank to pay off your credit card debt and now you're back down yeah. to zero you don't owe the bank anything but you, you still spent five thousand dollars or whatever you got the bonus you take the miles and now you go spend it and you go travel the world step two treat manufacture spend like your most important hobby this is essentially legal money laundering borrow money in the form of credit cards Use the credit cards to buy something that sends money back into your accounts, then pay off the credit cards. The algorithm reads that you spent money and rewards you with airfare credits or cashback rewards. Whether this is morally or ethically justifiable is up to you. Step three, open more credit lines. Your credit score is going to go through the roof since you're spending money and paying the balance to $0 every month. When you attain a high enough score, you begin opening numerous credit cards with various banks all over the country. Your credit score will continue to increase because your credit utilization will decrease greatly with the more credit availability. Step four, ask for credit limits. Since the algorithm reads that you spend a lot of money every month and you are very responsible with paying off your balance, you can call the banks and ask for credit limits. In Steven's case, he has scripts he uses to push the banks to increase the limits in substantial quantities. Step five, reap the rewards. At this point, you've probably accumulated enough points towards airfare that you can then begin traveling for free. From all the cash back rewards, you will have some cash on hand to enjoy a fun vacation for free, and you have high credit limits to go buy terrible fake guru products. Steven became a popular figure on YouTube from his claim of attaining $3.2 million in credit card lines by 20 years old. He even teamed up with Ty Lopez on Ty's credit course. Steven played the credit card game and won, but we need to dig a little deeper and see if there's something that we aren't seeing. One thing no one seems to be asking is where is the income to justify that much in credit card funding? 20,000 in gift cards. What are you using these for? So that's actually that's that's a secret. That's a secret. We can't we can't tell that yet. Okay, we won't tell you everything about it. <laughs> Steven was working at GE Digital and Yikek at the same time he was attending Stanford, so it's hard to say exactly how much time and energy he was devoting to any of the three. 
He's clearly a smart kid, but you can't be a high earner and only be working part-time. Yik Yak raised over $70 million of funding and ran out of money by April 2017. It's probably safe to assume that he made some money working at Yik Yak as a marketing lead, but I imagine it was more equity than salary for someone not a full-time employee and the equity went to zero just a few months later. There was a four month gap between leaving Yik Yak and starting Moves Inc. Moves had some impressive download and engagement numbers, but Dun & Bradstreet shows an annual revenue of 367,000 for nine employees. After paying expenses and salaries, I can't imagine there was much left over for young Steven. What I found interesting is that his at credit handle and persona was created before the creation of Moves Inc. My best guess is that he was able to leverage revenue numbers from Moves Inc. to ask for credit increases. As much as you can churn and manufacture spend, at some point you have to have enough income to support continual increases in your credit limit. You can't just demand credit increases until you receive $100 million in credit availability. At some point, the algorithm needs to see that you are making enough money to justify having so much credit available to a single user. With credit cards, the income is generally stated, not proven by tax returns. This is just my opinion, but my best guess is that there were some embellishing claims on how much money Steven was making. There's just no way to earn that much credit availability without some indication that huge revenue numbers were being generated. In Moves Inc., doesn't exactly sound like an app that can be monetized to the level of accessing over $3 million in credit. Rondi Lambeth is a YouTuber who runs a business credit funding company, similar to Steven in that his goal is go out and maximize the amount of credit available to his customers. Here's what he had to say. In order to get $3 million and 200 plus credit cards in a year, as a 19 and 20 year old kid at 580 credit score, He's doing some things that, in my opinion, is probably complete fraud. Uh, he's probably violating some um, federal laws with banking laws, with saying how much money he makes as a startup company. So realistically, can a 19-year-old kid, if you're 19 years old with 580 credit score, can you get $3 million in credit cards in the next 12 months? Probably not. It's unfortunate that YouTube and the podcasting world is so full of softball questions that no one has asked him where the income comes from. I'm using his LinkedIn and numerous hours of listening to him talk about himself and at no point has he been asked about his income in order to generate $3.2 million in business credit cards. Let's talk about somebody who doesn't have, has some dings on their credit. What was that website you were talking about? That's uh, cfpb.gov stands for Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. So this kid is using it. Now, there are companies out there that if you want your inquiries removed, they will go and on your behalf, will break the law. And they'll use the CFPB website to break the law. Rondi's opinion is that Steven was able to attain 220 credit cards in one year because he used the service to remove the inquiries from his accounts. That seems to be the only plausible way someone can attain that many credit cards in just one year without any form of income or income high enough to justify $3.2 million in credit. And it goes up. You invest into deal. Like I'm wow. invested in an oil deal right now that gives me about 15, 20% a year. And my interest rate is 6%. He's a savvy kid. And there's no doubt in my mind that he knows how to go out and make money. His entire strategy is 100% leverage at all times borrow money, use the money to go make more money, and you profit from the arbitrage. This is common in real estate, but it's incredibly risky if you don't have income high enough that it is greater than the cost to service the debt. And you charge people 15 to 100 thou to coach them. Yep. So you're making money hand over fist. Yep, yep. Steven makes a lot of money as a credit card guru. He holds masterminds periodically throughout the year, charging 15 grand for an attendee and up to 100 grand for personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching. He has worked with a few celebrities and a guy who drives a Lambo. I also noticed on one of his Instagram stories that he mentions that OnlyFans girls are making 50K a month at his castle. This is how he has access to all of these half-naked women in his Instagram. He's basically a modern day pimp if his post is any indication of the business model he's running. Rent a large house, allow OnlyFans girls to use his house, and in return he makes a profit off of their business. Or maybe he just allows access to the women so that he can have them in his photos and IG stories. Steven is the real deal when it comes to credit and understanding how to maximize rewards, travel, and the credit card algorithm but there's too much he isn't showing us that leads me to believe that there were some seriously unethical avenues he took 
to attain the credit limits he promotes, which is the foundation of his brand. Steven is able to afford the lifestyle he promotes now that he has multiple revenue streams and makes so much money selling his credit course and mentorship. But I can't seem to understand how he was ethically and legally able to attain $3.2 million in business credit without any clear indication of revenue to justify that amount. I'm confident that his course and mastermind provides a lot of value for understanding credit and beating the credit card algorithm. But the goal of this video is to show you how to always look behind the curtain at what these gurus are not showing you. Take the time to learn their industry and then judge for yourself if their brand is worth investing into. Even after hours of consuming interviews of Steven, there's no clear indication of any investments he has. The only investment he mentioned was an oil deal where he was generating a 15 to 20 percent return, and that was before the huge oil dip of 2020. Acquiring millions of dollars of credit lines is alluring, but he better be careful with what he's doing. This looks like a huge house of cards waiting to topple over. Thanks for watching.